It just so happens that sometimes I just want to get my hands wet and grip my car. Does that happen to any of you guys? <laughs> it does happen to me. I know it's kind of sick, right? It's kind of crazy, but here we are gripping my Carta on the Condor low drag with wet hands just because it feels so great. Yeah, my Carta as a material will do that to, to you. It feels great in hands, uh, especially when wet. <laughs> All right, jokes aside, kind of. A quick review of the Condor low drag. If you follow my channel, you've, you've noticed that I uploaded a video uh, beating the, the hell out of this blade on pine that had been sitting outside, kind of seasoned pine. It did pine. It did very well. I was surprised with the edge holding abilities uh, of slicing paper right after the tests. There was no sharpening uh, whatsoever after spending six, seven, eight minutes walking this knife uh, on wood. It did really well. It could slice paper with with, uh, with ease uh, after all that chopping and hammering. So, wanted to share further thoughts on the design. Number one, the name. This is a low drag. It has a bit of a tactical, uh, you know, inclination to the name. I'm not sure why uh, this knife doesn't scream tactical in any way. To be honest, you know, that's kind of a low drag, high speed. Uh, model that uh, assumes some special forces or units, um, you know, abide to or, or follow or defend, whatever. It just doesn't, the, the name doesn't really sing to me you know, on a beautiful knife like this. Um, I, I don't know, it doesn't make a lot of sense. Uh, let's talk about some specs. We have 6.58 inches in length on the blade itself, which is 167 millimeters. The blade thickness is 0 0.18 inches, which is about 4.572 millimeters. Okay, a little bit stout. Uh, the Rockwell hardness, and this is uh, this is interesting. It's low. It's HRC 50 to 55. Number one, that's a wide margin. Okay, on the Rockwell hardness scale for steels. Um, but what I've noticed is that since it's so low, let's say it's 50, closer to 50 than, than it is to 55, number one, that makes the steel tough. It's, it's uh, really, really hard to break a steel with, uh, from a quality manufacturer with a lower rockwell hardness like that one, closer to 50. That's, uh, that guarantees a lot of toughness, okay? Especially when striking and, and hard hits. But then what's interesting is that the edge holding, normally it's higher as you go up the scale, right? You get closer to, to 60. Well, this is in the low 50s and it's, it's holding its edge. You know, maybe you could argue that the test that I did is not super, um, super strenuous on a knife. Maybe, maybe, but you know, uh, smacking pine for, for a few minutes and then testing sharpness would um, impress me. That's all I have to say there, okay? The weight is uh, 11 ounces, which is 0 0.6875 pounds. Enough with the specs. Let's now talk about the looks. Well, I just really like the way it looks. It's got some, some classic lines, um, some classic colors. Some polished blade here, satin finished with a you know darker brown or, or brown micarta on handles here with a classic shape. Nothing really uh, screaming. Um, you know, modern knife making. You could argue that the looks are not appealing to you, but I think it's a really attractive knife, just by the way it looks, okay? The materials used, we talked about the steel, this is 1075, we, we focused on the performance and the results of the testing that I did, and also the hardness. 1075, um, it's, it's, got, it's gained respect from me, Prior to my recent Condor knives, I had not tested 1075. I had tested 1095, which is a well-loved uh, blade steel, tool steel that can rust on you. Apparently this can rust as well, but what, what has surprised me is the toughness. Uh, really, really tough on the edge. Absolutely no damage after all of that work. Okay, by Carta, you know what it is. It's really, really um, tough stuff. It's like pieces of cloth. Uh, or fabric that are glued together under some processes, okay? It's supposed to stay uh, in its place forever. It has a notch here, apparently this is, not apparently, but this is made for changing your grip from here to here, 
right? And then getting closer to, to your cutting, if you were to do something like this, and it applies on both sides of the handle, so that's, that's effective, I like it, okay? Um, however, however, on the, on the handle, which is quite nice, it thickens towards the pommel here, which is uh, normally what you want. You want your handle to get thinner as you get close to the, to the edge, and thicker over here, that's just uh, because your hand is a little bit um, narrower on the back, so you want more support there. That's the, the explanation behind it. But what I wanted to say is that there's a beak here, there's a pointy, a point, pointy area that it's quite uncomfortable, guys. That could go away easily. Right now it's not affecting me, but the moment I try to choke back a little bit on it, just to get more leverage on my chops, Oof, that's that's perfectly hitting my, my palm there. I'm not comfortable whatsoever. So if you're planning on using this knife for extended use, chamfer that off, you know, take a file, take some sandpaper and just uh, make it rounder. It'll be your hand will thank you. Also, some of these corners here are kind of sharp. Sharper than they, than they need to be, my, in my opinion. Okay? All right, so... Um, the handle again, well, well, we'll go back to that, that will be my last point, but I wanted to finish off the materials with uh, maybe talking about these pins in the handle that look pretty, they are see-through, pass-through, so in theory you could you could um, squeeze a, some, some line or some rope over there and attach the knife to a, to a spear or a stick, whatever you want to do with it. The sheath is your typical condor leather, which is really thick and well made. It's a nice piece of work, uh, well stitched. It has no drainage at the bottom for water, and I can't say that it's super heavy. As you know, if leather gets wet inside, it will become heavier, and it may potentially ruin your edge. I've seen some edge, severe edge damage on knives that have been sitting on wet leather um, for hours, actually. The, the edge was completely deformed on an A2 blade uh, that I had which I no longer have, but A2 is supposed to be more corrosion resistance to, than 1075, yet yeah, that happened to that blade. So be wary, be mindful of leather. If it gets wet, try to dry it up in the fire or on, or on the sun, okay? The belt loop is very simple. I don't like the fact that the knife sticks out this much. That will interfere with the backpack straps that you're wearing as you walk with the knife strapped on. Um, this is a fire, uh, you know, a slot for the fire, uh, ferro rod, fire steel. Um, I always like having these pretty handy. You can stick it in there and it, it's with the knife. So no complaints. You get the condor logo. Okay, this is a dark wood color. Not wood color, dark brown. Uh, really nice brown. Okay. Uses for the knife. Well, you could say it's a camp knife, right? Um, it's a cup knife of six and a half inches, so it allows you to do some heavier cutting than normal, uh, com more, more compact, five to four to five inch blade will give you. So from that perspective, uh, it, it's kind of a heavier duty cup knife in uh, the way I see it. Uh, hiking blade, it's becoming a little bit long and, and um, you know, heavy, right? 11 ounces, but mostly the length. It's kind of uh, long to be hiking with it, especially if you're going up and down to rain. Uh, it's becoming a little bit heavy uh, in my experience, but totally doable. I mean, people do it all the time. I do it all the time. Um, <clears throat> okay, so the testing that I did revealed the following. Uh, again, the, the blade steel did very well. The grind, the excuse me, the convex grind did very well as well. Uh, the edge holding did. The handle, however, although very classic and, and uh, simple looking, and you know, it swells up here, it's supposed to be really comfortable. It did not lend itself to chopping whatsoever. It did not lend to itself to chopping. It would need more flair, it would need more thickness in order to, for, uh, for me, for my hand, large hand, to be much more secure when chopping. So that was, uh, that was an eye-opener. It caught me by surprise, and I just made me, made me dislike uh, that aspect of the knife, just the way the handle is constructed. In theory, if you were to grab the knife like this, it would be no problem. If you were to carve all day, it would be absolutely no problem. That beak is still not bothering. It bothers, it bothers, the, it bothers you, the beak, and the way the handle wants to fly around, fly off of your hand, and rotate too much as you're chopping. 
it bothers you when you come down when you try to do this as you would normally do in a, in a larger knife like this so chopping i don't recommend it on this knife if you put a lanyard on it and you find a way of securing that lanyard on your hand okay maybe you have absolutely grippy gloves super grippy gloves that allow you to grab it without the risk of falling out but on regular hands skin to micarta this shape does not lend itself to chopping i don't recommend you do it uh, i don't know if i'm going to keep the knife uh, because of that reason because the blade is just getting a little bit up there it's closer to seven inches a seven inch knife needs to be able six and a half knife needs to be able to chop effectively um, yes this is not a chopper i know that you know they are much larger choppers but this could be a good compromise you know it's a mid-size heavier duty it needs to be able to chop and we have that problem so um, i believe condor is using the same handle as they do on the swamp rumper um, this is a shorter knife four and a half blade by the same handle uh, maybe for that knife it works well but the moment you increase the size and, and the broadness of the blade um, you have that problem so it's something to think about uh, i suggest you try it in hand uh, if you are to chop with it uh, before you make before you pull the trigger